Hi, Replay viewers. This is the Facebook Live where you're starting your ignition and hitting tanks, dingers, whatever you want to say. Um, we got Josh Herrick right here. I'm Spiker Helms. So enjoy. Yep. Today, guys, like Spiker said, we're going to give you about six different options in terms of how to trigger your swing. Um, we say trigger your swing. Every single hitter, nobody just hits from a standstill. Um, everybody has a different way of triggering their swing. And we've talked a lot about you know, at contact, in your launch position, your bat path. In a lot of ways, a lot of hitters are pretty much carbon copy in those positions. But their stance and their trigger, a lot of that's just their unique style. Okay, um, and, and a lot of that we don't necessarily want to change. But I think it's really important that hitters try out some of these different styles and different triggers and, and, and get the feel for some different things. So first off, I'm going to give you some examples here um, just in terms of what we're talking about in terms of hitting triggers. So right here, these are the six you know, main triggers. There's been some few you know, examples, crazy examples, like Jeff Bagwell actually had a negative stride um, and, and just kind of some weird ones. But these are the main six triggers. So we have toe tap, leg kick, uh, no stride, foot down early, stride, just forward first, and then knee to knee right in here. So let's get started here, and I'm going to demonstrate. Um, let's kind of talk about, like, the, the different guys. So, like, you have Hank Aaron, um, all-time great. A um, little this, bit different yep, era, too. Yep. Um, this who, is Benji Molina. That's Benji Molina. Also, Jim Edmonds, um, Goldschmidt, Goldschmidt Holiday, Tulo, and, and then Tulo, and then also understand where they're coming from. Um, I mean, Benji Molina is from uh, Puerto Rico, right. so the Dominican they they're they're taught to use their body uh, use their body all the time. Where like um, like Jim Edmonds and all the other Paul yeah, they're they're more of like a standard guy, just simple, easy Absolutely. to go. Absolutely, that's a great point because. The guys in the Dominican, the guys from Cuba, and, and so on and so forth, a lot of the Latin players, they've got a big weight shift. Um, they're used to you know having a longer stride and those types of things. Mainly just in terms of that's just kind of their, their style. That's how they've always been. The guys before them have always hit like that. And so you know a lot of times hitting is one of those things. You, know, you see one guy do it, and you try to replicate that. So that's a great point that Spiker brings up. Let's demonstrate a couple of these here. And what we're going to go through is the pluses as well as the minuses of each of these triggers. Each trigger, it's one of those things where you just need to figure out what's comfortable for you. Um, I'm a big believer in, you know, we don't want to necessarily have cookie cutter hitters, meaning everybody's got to have a toe tap or everybody's got to get their foot down early. Because if you look at the big league guys, yes, we've talked about it, contact. Sure, you've got to be hitting off a firm front side and a back side L launch position. I mean, guys are almost a carbon copy, but in terms of their triggers, all these guys are good hitters, you know. And what Josh is saying here on the triggers, so let's kind of get down to the technical term. It's your load. It's your right. stride. Like, you have to get yourself started. If you don't get yourself started, you're not going to be able to hit the baseball. Exactly. And the biggest misconception when I talk to my lessons is that what's the main purpose of the load and stride? And yes, it is to get your momentum and get yourself going towards the baseball. But the, the main, main reason that I tell them is to get yourself ready and let your eyes work. But again, going back to Facebook Live, right. what, three weeks ago we talked about your eyes and your bat are the biggest, the two biggest tools as a hitter. So we need to get our load and stride and our trigger down pat before we can start crushing baseballs. Absolutely. So let's get right into this. I'm going to demonstrate all six of these. And then we're going to talk and discuss... Uh, the pluses and minuses of all of these and uh, just kind of our take on these in terms of you know with how to use them and, and that type of thing so and first, every guy is different every single guy is different yeah. you got to find out what's best for you exactly so the first one I'm going to demonstrate is, is the toe tap um, we have two low here but some other notable guys if you want to take a look at their videos Chipper Jones was a toe tap guy especially from the left side he was a switch hitter but from the left side he was definitely a toe tap guy and then Sammy Sosa was the big toe tap guy that really got it started um, in terms of using this trigger. So let's get right into it here. So for the toe tap, all we mean by toe tap is I'm in my stance and I'm going to tap back with my front foot just like this. Okay. Now, one thing to note, guys, is this is, yeah, these are different triggers, but my swing's not going to change. It's not going to change. Yeah, I'm with a toe tap or a leg kick, and I'm going to demo all these. 
my swing should stay the exact same. It's just gonna be a little bit different trigger mechanism. So first one here, toe tap. Okay. Do one more with the toe tap here. Notice my weight staying on the inside half of the back leg. Okay, so there's the toe tap. Next one here, the leg kick. Holiday is a perfect example right here. Uh, we'll show the pictures again. Uh, Manny Ramirez was a big leg kick guy. Uh, there's a lot of guys. Cargo, uh, Carlos Gonzalez. Um, so let's demo that. Here's the leg kick. Ryan Zimmerman's another one. Now, what's the benefits of a leg kick and what's the disadvantages of a leg kick, Josh? One of the things I think with a leg kick, it can help you in terms of timing the pitcher because you're here and it can really help you to get started. Um, some guys do feel like they can utilize their lower half a little bit more too with that leg kick. Um, it's kind of a balancing motion. But uh, the downside is timing because you've got your leg up, now you've got to get it down. And uh, that's the biggest thing with the leg kick. Yep. All right, let's uh, head into the next one. Here's leg kick. Oh, we're going to go straight into leg kick again? Yep. Okay. Next one here, no stride. Uh, this is Hack's favorite. What I mean by no stride is you're going to get in your stance, maybe a little bit wider. And all you're going to do is pick up your heel, put it down, and go. Steve Hacker from um, our, our facility, he teaches this a lot. He's also the home run, he was the home run leader for Missouri State when he played. Um, hit a lot of home runs in the 90s for, uh, in the minor leagues for the Atlanta Braves too. So he teaches this. Yep, here's no stride. And the good thing with the no stride is it's very simple. All you're doing is picking up, putting down. And Jeremy, we'll get to your question one second. Let's just have Josh uh, finish this off Al real quick. Al was the no strike guy. Okay, my swing's not changing, just my trigger. Next one here, foot down early. Um, if you watch a lot of Division One baseball, a lot of times or college baseball, this is very popular to see guys get their foot down early. Okay, um, Goldschmidt's an example. All right, here we go. One more. Same swing, just getting my foot down early. Okay, and then the forward first stride. This is more old school, Hank Aaron style. So I'm literally just gonna stride forward. Hands are gonna go back. Ken Griffey Jr. was this as well. Forward first. And the last one, knee to knee. Uh, Yadier Molina, as well as his brother, were knee to knee. Got it. <clears throat> so right. let's get to Jeremy's question. And sorry for like the camera. For some reason, it keeps on shaking, so I had to switch it around to frontal view. Um, how does the timing vary depending on whether you are getting fastballs or off speeds? The timing of your legs does not change. That's, no. a, that's a huge misconception. And when, we, when Josh was talking about the high leg kick, I was a high leg kick guy. Right. And I don't teach high leg kick. If guys do it, I live with it. I tell them the disadvantages of it. But I try not to change it because, again, failure is going to be the best teacher. And for me, if I, was, if, if I listened and just trusted in what um, I'm teaching now, which is get the front foot early and on time, however that is, um, I would have been I would have been a lot better uh, my junior senior year. So it it with with these triggers and all that, understand that I want to get myself in a good position to hit, and I want my eyes to be able to work. That's yeah. the main purpose. And then you can just adjust from there. So your hands are the last piece of the sequence, and we can always go back and talk about the sequence again in another Facebook Live. But right now we're talking about the triggers and the load. Just understand that the load is your ignition to hit tanks and hit dingers. Those are the one. That's you have to be absolutely perfect with your load and stride. Absolutely. And I would say if you're a youth coach, especially, I wouldn't make your hitters hit a certain way. I wouldn't say you have to hit with a no stride or you have to stride forward. I think it's one of those things that just kind of comes down to the player. I think it's one of those things if 
you're struggling as a player, it's not a bad idea to try out maybe a different trigger or just teach all the triggers, really, mm -hmm. and then let the players figure out and which that, one works And that's them. the hardest thing for us, like for me, is when a coach forces a trigger onto somebody and that's not his body type, that's not how he works. Example, a taller guy could have a low, um, uh, just pick his foot up and put it right back down. Right. Where me, it just didn't work. I, I tried it, it didn't work. Right. You've got to experiment, try, try not to cookie cut every single piece, every single player. And it's more on, a lot of it's on personality too. I mean, guys like to move around a lot. They're not gonna be comfortable with just two super wide base, yep. no movement. Kind of, it just feels like I personally did not like that because I felt like it was more I was in concrete hitting. But a bigger guy who's maybe 6'5", you know, 240, they might feel really comfortable in that. Mm -hmm. So I like to have a little bit of movement back and then forward. Everybody's going to be different, though, so it just kind of depends. Yep. So, um, yeah, that's that's the end of Once the Once again, trigger. guys, here's the pictures. Yep. Um, uh, toe tap, leg kick, foot down early, no stride. All these pictures right here, knee to knee, forward first. So take a look at some of those. All right, so let's talk about camps. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, camps again, all right? World Series camp right here, all right? Um, camps, they're going to be great, okay? If you are interested in playing, all right, you're guaranteed eight games this week, okay? And um, World Series camp, June 19th through the 22nd. The big thing here, guys, we have plenty of options in terms of setting up the scheduling for this. Uh, we also have discounts, so... If you're interested in coming to two or more camps or three or more camps, you're going to get a discount, okay? Um, all that information is on our website at www.bnsports.us backslash ballwim. But it's going to be a great week of camp. Um, there's going to be plenty of instruction, but it's really based on guys playing. We want to get you out there. We want to get you playing, uh, you know, facing, facing batters, facing hitters, guys making plays. And then from there, we're going to make adjustments and, and go from there. But... If you are interested in kind of a Sandlot style of play, get out there, play against your friends or uh, other teams you play with, hey, this is a great opportunity. We've had the World Series camp for a number of years. It's been very, very successful, and we look forward to having another successful year with the World Series camp. So if you have not checked it out, or if you have, if you've came the last couple of years, we'd love to have you back again, guys. Guys, um, my name is Spiker Helms. This is Josh Herrick. If you like lessons throughout the season Absolutely. to get yourself tuned up, 30-minute um, lessons, uh, yeah. go, ahead and, go ahead and give us a call. We, we love do to work hitting and fielding. We also have really good pitching instructors, too. Uh, Dave Burkby, Travis Griffin, mm -hmm. and many, many more, as well as if you're a softball player or you have a daughter who plays softball. We have really good softball instructors, whether it be slap hitting, catching, um, just your basic mm -hmm. fundamentals. So, and plus on top of that, we actually do have a softball camp, uh, the Elite Diamond Softball Camp as well. Uh, so check that out on our website. All right, guys. See ya.